Good afternoon, everybody, and I'm going to be making this video it is with Brian Denlinger. Uh, it is called, Was Abraham Justified by Faith or Works? And uh, I don't know exactly, uh, maybe what it, what uh, Denlinger is saying here is he's you know, uh, justified, but uh, it's confusing with him because he is borderline faith and works, or he is already faith and works, uh, a person already. But... Uh, but justified is the, is the key word here. Justified for what? No, that's the key question that you have to you have to be uh, asking here because you are justified when you're saved. But there's different justifications. You know, justifying in different ways that uh, God uses. So it's not always being used in that same uh, in that same context as eternal salvation. Because once you once you are saved, you are sealed, you are justified, right? You, like uh, once you believe the gospel, death, burial, resurrection, and the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. So uh, we'll see what uh, what he's trying to say here. Because I'm not hundred percent sure. He's very confusing because he borderlines or has already completely converted to faith works. He says it's not in the uh, not for the the church age today, but you can't really tell with this guy. He's he's on and off. He's all over the place. But uh, for sake of not making a long video, I'll start playing it already here. So, Abraham justified by faith or works or both. Turn in your King James Bible to the book of Romans, chapter four. Pause the video. Go get a Bible and look it up. You need to read along. Romans chapter four, verse one. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof the glory, but not, not before God. All right, so that's very simple, right? Uh, if he was, um, if Abraham was justified by works, he hath whereof the glory, but not before God. Because uh, we all know, and the common Christian knows that faith, uh, you know, that is a working faith, that is like, um, as you grow in your faith, it's, it starts to work out, right? It worked. It starts to work its way out of it. But uh, you don't boast, or you don't. Um, you're not justified uh, eternally uh, by that. You're just justified in that uh, you're doing something, right? That you can call this person a Christian, or that God can use you, because God definitely different, definitely uh, used Abraham. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward, reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. I see, and that's the key one here. But him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. His faith, it's just that. If a person doesn't work, and the, th the difference is, is that Abraham was working. He was, uh, his faith was working out, right? Uh, when he read, or when he, when God spoke to him, he moved. And uh, that that's the key thing here. And, but to somebody that, let's just say if God spoke to him and he didn't move, uh, just his faith was just, uh, he was justified just uh, by his faith, and that's it. Uh, he has no wor uh, working of his faith that's producing anything. That means that he, God can't use this person. He is just, okay, he's, he's saved, but I just can't use him in any significant way like he could Abraham. So was Abraham justified by works or faith in this passage? Or you'd say, well, by faith, right? Keep well, your yeah, hand there. The thing is, it has to be by faith. Um, uh, but justified, this is where you have to ask, justified for what? You know, and then if we're going to look into Abraham's story uh, as to why and for what reason was he justified? Go to James chapter 2. So James chapter 2. Very important to compare scripture with scripture. Yeah. It is important. James chapter 2. In verse 20 and through verse 24. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? 
All right, so now this is where you would have to say, okay, now let's go back to uh, Romans chapter 4, that faith without works is dead, all right? Now to him that worketh, uh, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that sanctifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Faith without works is dead. All right, uh, that means you're justified, but, uh, and his faith, is counted for righteousness. It's just his faith that's counting him for righteousness. But because he's not doing anything else, it's just, a, that's as far as it's gonna go. It's, it's just not a, an outwardly producing faith. So uh, compare scripture with scripture. I wish he would do that, but he's not doing that. But if you do, if you read that very first verse that he says in James here, um, uh, let's see what it was. I think you read verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Yeah, and that's just all that he's going to have is just the initial faith that saves him, and it's just a dead faith from that point on, because you go back to Romans chapter 4, verse 5, but to him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So try, you know, I suggest that Brian Denlinger tries to compare scripture with scripture. If he's going to use these two in a row like this, then possibly maybe he should really start to examine it, right? And he starts looking at the camera, and, like as if he has a point, but he has no point. Hmm. Hmm. Was not Abraham our father justified by works but it says in Romans chapter 4 it's by faith yeah he was justified by works when he or yeah was was not Abraham our father justified by works yeah justified for what that he could be used that God would use him that God could bless him that God could do things for him you know that because it's his faith was working outwardly that of works here it's by works. No, no. That that verse before came that that was related to that one. It was not Abraham our father justified by works, but yeah, justified to do what? Right? And a person that just has faith and, and so on, but not any external working, uh, working out his faith, then um, you wouldn't, like, no Christian could really justify calling him a Christian in a sense, because he's not really doing anything and you just don't know, right? Whether he would be a saved person or whatever the case is, you just don't know. But you can call Abraham the father of, you know, the father of faith uh, because of what he did. He was justified in that, right? Because God justifies him because of his outwarding, like believing and uh, and obeying the word of the Lord and stuff like that. So then you can just tell he's justified. Whereas if you're not doing anything like that, how can you be justified? But we can justify Abraham because of his works. Do we have a contradiction? No, there are no co contradictions in the King James Bible, unless you don't rightly divide the word of truth. Then the Bible contradicts like crazy. Because, you know what? You see? Thank you. Uh, the, with Abraham, it talks instantly when he, when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar. So then there was an outward expression of the Lord said to do such, and he did it, and he was justified. God could use him. We try to reconcile this, what's going on here, in the book of James with Paul and epistles, and try to make them teach the same thing, you're gonna have a real big problem. No, there's no problem. But see, it's a very important thing to illustrate here. Let's continue reading in James chapter two. Uh, verse 21, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect? Yeah, and you know what? If you work out your faith and you're, you're starting to use it, uh, your faith is going to may, be made perfect because you're going to see certain things. You're not going to, and this is the trouble with a lot of Christians is that they have faith in the in the gospel 
but they don't have a lot of faith in um, trusting in him and doing certain things. Right? There's certain areas where people struggle in. And here is Abraham's only son, right? And he's supposed to offer him. Uh, that's got to take an extraordinary amount of faith to think that if I offer up my son, this is my only son, and that I have to offer him up, that he was willing to do it. You know, now you're justified. You know, you read through scriptures that God will take care of you and, uh, you know, uh, God will bless you and stuff like that. But if you're never doing anything, how can you grow in that, right? So that's the that's the the, the main scripture that's being taught here is that if it's not if you're not outwardly working your faith and trusting in the Lord and whatever you do and stuff like that, uh, you'll never know, you know, how how uh, your faith can grow and how you can trust Him and how God can justify. You being in a, a position of teaching or whatever the case is because you're outwardly working it now. Hmm. We'll get back to that. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Yeah, uh, but it, again, you like if you just... Pair scripture to scripture, but he that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So his faith is already counted for righteousness. But uh, this, uh, then he says, "You see then how by how that by by works a man is justified, not by faith only." So it's the working of something that's coming out for us to justify him, or that God can be justified in using you and in blessing you and stuff like that, that, that you are somebody that's going to stick to God's word and to do what he says. Because we're going to see that again. Uh, I, you know, I, I'll go on a little bit longer in here and then I'll go to the Abraham story. Okay. Now, look back there at verse uh, 22. Seest thou how faith worked with his works and by works was faith made perfect? Now think about what yeah, Abraham... Yeah, but you know what? All this, all this has nothing to do with eternal salvation. None of this has to do with eternal salvation. All right, it's just his, his uh, faith working outwardly now. That that's all that it is. If if he did nothing at all, God just could not use him. God could not bless him, and he would have to go to somebody else. That somebody else that would work out his faith. Abraham did. God tells him, Sac "Sacrifice your son Isaac upon the altar," and he gets the wood and everything, and he goes up there. To sacrifice his son, and his son says, "Father, and you know, yes, what is it?" And he says, paraphrasing here, um, "I see here's the wood and everything, but where's the lamb for the burnt offering?" And he says, "God Himself shall provide a lamb." You know, very prophetic significance there. But uh, would it have made sense for Abraham to be there and just say, "Hey, um, Isaac, God told us that um, He has to, you know, we have to have a sacrifice over there, so we're just going to believe by faith that God's going to take care of." It. God himself shall provide a lamb for the sacrifice, son. So let's just stand here and watch. No. Um, would it have been good if Abraham would have just said, uh, don't worry about it, son, I'm going to have to kill you now. And the angel of the Lord says, hey, stop, Abraham. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. You don't have to help me here. I'll just I'll take care of myself. And, and kills Isaac. No. Uh, so what did Abraham have to have? But see, the thing is that even like Abraham had faith, he grew in his faith enough to know that even if he would have killed, even if he had to have killed his son, that God could bring him back to life. That's how much faith Abraham had. That had, had he, had God not stopped him, that even though he had killed Isaac, because Isaac is, is the, the child of promise, that God would resurrect him somehow. Because then God would go back on his word. But because Abraham had so much faith in God's word, something had to be worked out here. Because... Whether I, I don't do it or whether I do do it, uh, God was going to be able to deal with it. That's how much faith Abraham had. And that's the outward expression of the faith that he had. He was already saved. Had he not uh, gone to go sacrifice Isaac, 
he would still have been saved. It's just God couldn't use him. He was just, he wouldn't have been able to justify Abraham in carrying out his plan, you know? He had to have both there. Faith that God himself would provide a land for the sacrifice, but works being willing to go up and take his son and put him in the altar and willing to kill him. Faith and works. No, Is that No, again, he's mixing this with eternal salvation which has nothing to do with it. Abraham already had eternal salvation. This is just the outside working of it and uh, how that, uh, you know, people around him could see that Abraham was justified because of the things that he was doing and things were working out for him. Just like us, if we are Christians, we go do certain things. It justifies us as Christians because we're doing certain things, not for our eternal salvation, but just a testimony that we are, right? So we're going to go to... Um, uh, we're going to go down to Abraham's story here and what he has to say. And there's going to be two stories I'm going to go to, but Abraham's one of them. So let's just see. Um, we'll go to verse number 22 or uh, Genesis chapter 22. And then we'll start um, at verse, uh, verse number 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him, because this is where um, uh, Isaac's already on the altar. They've already gone there and uh, and stuff like that. And he's just about to, uh, you know, uh, take a knife to Isaac, right? So, and the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here I fear am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For, no, for now I know, for now I know, which is the key words here. For now I know, all right, that thou fearest God. Before they, God, or the angels, whoever, I'm thinking it's God, but um, they had no idea how much he feared God. Would he pick his son over God's word, right? So this is that not a test, but... Uh, a trial for him to see if he will do this and to see how much he loves God over his his only son and there's a reason why it did this so um, I'll just yeah uh, for now I know that thou fearest God seeing thou hast not withheld thine son thine only son and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. All right, so, but what was all of this for? There's a reason God did this. It's not just really nearly arbitrary God doing something. There's a reason for this, all right? Because um, this will really solidify something. And we'll go to verse 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven and said, uh, out of heaven the second time and said, by myself, I have sworn, saith the Lord. So this has to be God. All right. For because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thine son, thine only son, because he did not do this, his face and outward expression of his faith, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. That was the whole reason for this. Abraham was already saved. This has nothing to do with eternal salvation. This, this is all to do with if God could bless Abraham in a certain way. You know, is God going to bless him? Can God use him? Can God look at him as a leader, as somebody that's going to obey him over uh, the people that he's going to be in charge of or people that he loves? Or is anything going to become in between him and God? Right? Is he going to love anything more? Because if he really loves his son Isaac, and which is a really, uh, which it does indicate in the scripture that he really loved his son Isaac. That he was willing to give, offer him up, even if he had to kill him. 
or not kill him, but offer him as a sacrifice, that he picked God's word over his love for his son. And that's what God can use. And that's what, that's what James is talking about. It's not talking about eternal salvation here. That they, that they had to do some kind of work salvation in the Old Testament. All right. Uh, we're going to go to 1 Samuel. And we'll go to chapter 15. Then we'll go to verse... Uh, Verse number 19. I'm going to read down here because it's going to be quite a way, quite a ways to go. So verse number 19. Uh, so first, first Samuel chapter 15, verse 19. Wherefore, then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, and the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord, knowing this is what was happening in Abraham. He obeyed the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than to sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is a sin as witchcraft, and a stubbornness as the iniquity of the adulterer, as adultery, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Alright, now he's no longer justified in being king. But this is not just being a king that, that Saul had. And Saul, or yes, yeah, Saul... But uh, I'm going to read some more on here, and then I'll give a little bit of more that I was going to say. And Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed, transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. And Saul is admitting here, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. And he did not fear the Lord, right? He has transgressed, transgressed against uh, the commandment of God, and he feared the people over that. And that's why God could not use him. See, had Saul done this, had Saul done this perfectly, he would have gotten David's eternal throne, the inheritance of the eternal throne, where uh, Christ's lineage would come from. So now here it says in verse number 26, uh, and Samuel said unto Saul, I will not uh, return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. And Samuel turned about to go away. He laid hold upon the skirt of the mantle, and, and it rent. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from, this, from thee this day, and hath given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. And the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent for he is not a man that should that he that he should repent so he no matter what god is not going to repent from this it's it's said and it's done when god said it it's it's over it's it's going to happen he's not going to repent from this one but uh uh samuel was no longer justified before god to be the king of israel he proved that now that he was no longer justified to be king. So God was going to take this away. Saul never lost his salvation. He just lost the kingdom. He just lost the king uh, from being king that God had anointed him to be. He lost that part of it. But he never lost his salvation. Things like this, like uh, uh, righteous and stuff like that, uh, it... it was, Oftentimes, it doesn't have anything to do with eternal security. It has absolutely, and justification has nothing to do with eternal security. Once you believe you are justified, all right, you are already, but now you're justified or made righteous in other ways, the outworking of your faith, if, if God can put you into leadership, if, uh, 
If, you, if God can make you a teacher, you know, study to show, show that self approved, that means you're justified. If you're, being, if you're studying and you're showing yourself approved, you're justified to be a, a certain thing. But not that if you don't, you, you're just not saved. That's not the case here. It has nothing to do with eternal salvation. So always keep that in mind. We'll go a little bit more here with the video and uh, discuss a few more things here then, I guess. The setup that we have today. No. No. So why on earth would one of these hyper dispensationalists or non dispensationalists they both, both kind of mean that some of these people, these uh, hyper grace or free grace, whatever. Free grace. It is free grace. God pours out his grace freely over us. Like, we don't deserve it. It's stuff that we don't deserve. They'll try to say that uh, salvation's always been by faith alone, and the uh, yeah. non-distance. It, it always has. This uh, this shows nothing about salvation. This is nothing. What he quoted here has nothing to do with salvation. Eternally. Says once they'll say the same thing. Salvation's always been by faith alone. You know, when you get right down to a lot of these heretical groups, really just believe the same thing. They just use a lot of very confusing language and whatever else. And you really boil it down to the same thing that they really believe. Very interesting. But you see, these people, they'll try to use Romans chapter 4 to prove that salvation was by faith alone in the Old Testament. There were to... Yeah, Romans was always by faith alone. Uh, like it says, Romans chapter 4, verse 5. But to him, so here he's talking about Abraham, right? But to him, like Abraham was working out by his faith, all right? Uh, and that's how God could justify him and do what he said he was going to do with him. But then verse 5, it says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that is justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. You know, not Abraham, uh, or even, in, I'll just use Israel as an example. Okay, God expressly used David. But that not that nobody else was saved. That That's the key thing here. It's, just because God can use somebody, is using somebody else, that doesn't mean that nobody else was saved. It's just God chose him because there was something about him, right? Because he chose David because there was, a, you know, he found a, uh, somebody that, you know, was better than Saul. So there was a reason why he's better. He was doing certain things that were better, right? Um, even just like um, when... Uh, you know, when, uh, when you elect bishops and deacons, it's not just because you elect a bishop and a deacon, that doesn't mean that there was no other saved person. It's just you saw these people and that their faith working outwardly uh, was justified in being put into positions of power. There were works involved. But you compare scripture with scripture, there were works involved. In fact, the works were what made the faith perfect. Yeah, the works made it perfect. It, it's just, it's not that made it uh, uh, justified that you were going to be saved now. It's just, it was made perfect. Like, it, it's it's actually doing something, right? Because, just because it's not doing anything, you still, you still have righteousness. It's just, it's not uh, righteousness in, in, in uh, the outward expression of it, that God can use you in anything. Like you, like if, if you were a Christian and you didn't study, you didn't read, you didn't do anything, uh, you, God would not justify you being a teacher. You're not justified in that area because you haven't outwardly expressed or shown that God can use you in this because you're not even obeying the basics of what God wants you to do. You're not obeying the words of the Lord, right? And that is to study and and stuff like that before you start teaching you have to read and stuff like that you see uh, so is Abraham justified by justified by faith or works the answer is both. justified by faith but justified in what you know that's the key here justified to do what why it was another dispensation it's not the same thing that we're under today and of course, you know, if they were, all, if that's uh, the same as New Testament salvation or whatever else, and that was his salvation back then, then everybody. But that wasn't not his salvation. There's different kinds of salvations too. Salvation from what? Right, like after they crossed the the sea, uh, Moses uh, and the Israelites after they crossed the sea, 
uh, on dry land, and then they covered the, the Egyptian army and killed them, then they say, what great salvation God has wrought. That's a different kind of salvation. It's a physical one. All right? There's uh, different kinds of things that Brian needs to really consider here. Else from then on, had to gone home through the same thing and taken their only son and put him on the altar and was going to, you know, sacrifice him. No. See, there are types. Of Even if Abraham wouldn't have, he would still have been saved. It's just God would not have been able to justly give him that blessing. Just he justly couldn't give Saul the blessing that he gave David because of what Saul did, but he could justly bless. Abraham because of his outward working of faith. It's just the faith that's being outwardly worked out, that he's actually trusting, he's doing certain things. In the Old Testament, and non-dispensationalists will run to those types and say it's the same thing. Well, see, and then that's how just a lot of Christians are today, right? We, uh, we become Christians, it's just how much do you trust God? Right, that that's the key thing here. Is is it how God is going to be able to use you? Is how much do sure can okay, you trust in the gospel and, and the gospel of your salvation and, and stuff like that, uh, eternal or eternally secured? But there's other areas in your life that a person could struggle with. Like for instance, I can't give up X because they don't put enough trust in God that He can take that away from them because they love it too much. Just like if Abraham would have loved his son more, he couldn't have been used to bring the seed. God would have had to use somebody else. You know, he wouldn't have been able to bless Abraham through his seed and to, the, to be a blessing to all the nations and stuff like that. So because of your outward working of your faith, God can use you, bless you, and make you righteous in what you do. But if you look at the type, it's a lamb being slain, but it doesn't say anything about that lamb being buried and rising from the dead. Don't fall for the non-dispensational heresy out there and this free grace junk and whatever else that seeks to, to eliminate any kind of works, salvation that's throughout the Bible and into the future. Uh, there are no works for salvation today. Right? No, even according to his own uh, thing here, there's works for today. Uh, he just doesn't uh, believe that he says it, but yeah, yeah. If you don't, if he doesn't see a changed life, you're probably not saved. So that's works, uh, and I agree. You might not be, but he's borderline saying you're not saved. <laughs> His one video, actually, not too long ago. Uh, if you're a post tribber, you need to get saved from post tribulation, from a, a doctrine of post tribulation. No, that's not the key to salvation. Uh, no, uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and the pre-tribulation rapture, and thou shalt be saved. No, you just need to know the basics of the doc of uh, the gospel, or uh, yeah, the gospel. And uh, once you understand that, then you are saved. You work out your doctrines later on. When you, as you start learning, you start working out your doctrines. There's no conditional salvation here, all right? I'll, I'll say you only if you believe the pre-trib rapture. That's not what this, this the scriptures say. I mean, he's wrong on a lot of things. Brian Denlinger's wrong on a lot of things here already. And I don't know if he's saved or not. Like, it, it, you could probably say at the most, I don't know if they're saved. You know, or I, like at the best, like I say with Brian, is I don't know if he's saved. The way if he believes his gospel, uh, and stuff like that, he may very well not be. But I don't know for sure. I can't say definite. No, he's not. I can't do that. That is true. But in the time of David's trouble, oh yeah, there's work salvation then, yeah. along with faith. At least at the beginning. By the time you hit Matthew chapter 25, the judgment of the nations, Jesus Christ comes back, he doesn't judge him for one second about faith. Not for one second. He visited the fatherless and the widows, those in prison, and where's the faith? It's not there. Then you go into the Millennial Kingdom, or the Thousand Year Reign of Christ, if you want to say it that way, and you go into that thing, 
And there is absolutely no faith at all connected to salvation because Jesus Christ is physically on the earth. Uh, that doesn't matter. Jesus Christ was physically on the earth and people still had to have faith. It's just that simple. Some believed and some believed not, right? Like uh, when certain people saw it, they were, you know, they believed on him and some didn't. Why? Because you still had to have faith. Faith in who he said he was. And uh, so regardless of these, if you see certain things, like Israel saw a lot of things, but they didn't believe. They still needed faith to believe, right? That he was the Messiah or anything, you know, whatever was required at that time that they needed to believe. They still had to have faith in that because what if he is just a man? But you see, these people don't want you to know that. And why? Because they're trying to get people ready to go into the time of Jacob's trouble because they're going in there themselves. And then they can say it's faith alone. Doesn't matter. You have eternal security. There's always been eternal security and there always will be eternal security. You can't lose your salvation. And people will say, really? Well? Well, see, uh, in that time, uh, people that do come to faith, because I'm a uh, preacher of rapture guy, but people who do come to faith during the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, they will have to first believe. That is definitely true. They have to first believe, and because they believe, they will not take that mark of the beast. Uh, they will suffer and die for it, or God will kill them before they take the number because God will not lose any of his sheep, right, or his people. He, uh, so if they truly do believe and they struggle and they are tempted to take the number or something like that, uh, God will kill them before they do. If anything is possible. Because uh, it's always been by faith alone, one hundred percent. It's never been by works. You have always initially have to believe first, and then you move from there. And now you your faith works outwardly. Well, I don't want to lose my job. I don't think it'd be God's will for me to lose my job. And after all, I won't be able to feed my wife and children, and then I'd be worse than them, infidel, and denying the faith. And so I better just go ahead and take the mark. And after all, I can't lose my salvation because I'm born again. I'm sealed. You see what I'm saying? That's what's really going on here. All these false teachers out there are trying to get people ready to take the mark. No, that has really nothing to do with anything. Uh, uh, people in that time will know. People, Christians already today know that uh, if even if you did go through that time, that uh, there's an exception to, exceptions to certain situations. Uh, Brian's just being, uh, you know overly sensitive here about certain things you know he doesn't work but yet you know he relies on other people to provide food for his for him and his family so really no different uh, you know he's worse than an infidel according to that uh, because he's actually not visiting the elderly or the sick he's not doing anything uh, as a pastor or, or I don't know does he even have a, a bishop or a deacon you know I don't know what he has exactly. So, I pray you don't get deceived by these people. And I pray you get away from them. Um, you don't have a responsibility to watch any of these heretics out there. They try to tell you, they try to use Romans chapter 4 to prove that salvation's always been the same. Well, Romans chapter 4 does prove that salvation has always been by the same. So, I don't know what he's trying to say here. And then he goes to James, which proves Romans chapter 4. And, uh, yeah, you go look at the Abraham story, and then you look at Saul's story, and as to what righteousness means, and or was made righteous, or justified, and stuff like that. And then you look to see what what that was all about. And it's clear as day that there, there's different meanings for justification, like or different uh, situations for justifying somebody. Or, or uh, claiming that somebody's righteous. Uh, there are no dispensational changes. Uh, I get away from those liars and deceivers. Anyway, that's that's it for the video. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below. But uh, I don't think Brian is. Uh, I don't think he knows what he's talking about anymore. Uh, I think he's gone off the deep end in a lot of uh, doctrines and. Uh, you know, I hope and pray he gets back on track. Uh, if any Brian followers see this video, comment down below as to uh, uh, 
uh, let me know what you guys think of this. Uh, if, if I'm wrong in any area, which I probably think you guys will see something wrong with this, but uh, just let me know. Uh, like, share, comment, subscribe. Um, dislike, doesn't matter to me. Uh, I'll see if he comes up with another video anytime soon, but uh, I think I'll make a video just personally myself without uh, you know, listening to a Brian Denlinger video about this kind of stuff, but I have some other stuff in the works as well as uh, you know, one lady had commented that she would like to see me do something about the King James Version. So I'm going to do something like that too, and uh, I'm going to get that stuff all in the works and to present it to you guys. But uh, yeah, like I said, let me know down below what you guys think in the comment section, and um, we'll thank you guys for watching. Amen. Thank you.